This entire PC gaming setup cost me less than $500. I made a video super similar to this about a month ago and you guys loved it, but it was with a console. So this time we're gonna see if we can actually replicate it, but with a PC. This entire PC cost me $353. So it's a little bit more than the old Xbox Series S, but we're gonna see if they can actually get similar performance. For the motherboard, I had to buy a refurbished A320 motherboard and I don't really recommend buying refurbished, especially if it's like computer parts. But since we're on such a tight budget, I just kind of had to. This motherboard is also a micro ATX motherboard, so it's pretty small, and although it's not going to be the best looking motherboard in the PC case, it's kind of the best we could do for this budget. Our CPU is, of course, a Ryzen, and we went with the Ryzen 5 2600, which actually has six cores. Let's just put that in gently, just like so, and it's installed. Perfect. For the RAM, I ended up going with two 8GB sticks, so of course 16 gigabytes. but this is where you can kind of change things around. If you have like an extra 20 $20 and you just want your PC to be more aesthetic, you can actually get like RGB RAM because this is just, it's not RGB at all. At least it's not the like ugly looking green RAM sticks, but yeah, it's not RGB at all. So it won't really like look too nice in the PC. And there we go. We got them both installed. The SD card I went with isn't crazy at all, but it is actually pretty small. It is only 256 gigabytes. One thing I hate about buying used PC parts is that a lot of the times the screws don't come. Look, Luckily, I had an extra spare screw for the actual like SD card to screw it in, but man, I got so lucky because if I didn't have it, then I basically couldn't even screw it in. Good. Oh my gosh. Yo, if that just broke my GPU, I'm actually gonna be so mad, bro. Okay, it's now time to start adding things to the PC. And for the PC, this is a tempered glass gaming PC case. And it's one of the cheapest gaming PC cases you can get that actually has RGB fans included. And it's also tempered glass. I think it would cost me around like $35 or something. To be honest, many people take off this kind of plastic wrapping paper on the side panel after they're done with the PC. So it's kind of probably weird for some of you guys, but I just take it off before I start building because I don't want to forget later. Now that the side panel is off, we can actually add the motherboard into the PC case. But of course, let's just remove like this thing. It's just like a manual. And then I don't even know what this is. Okay. It turns out it was just some screws, but there is a couple of things at the back of the PC. So before I actually add anything, let me just take that off. Okay. So this is the back of the PC. You got all your like kind of basic cables that come for like starting up the PC. You got your fan hub and there's a couple of zip ties that I actually have to cut. Or actually I can just untwist. They're not that tight. I just placed the motherboard and now it's time to actually screw it in. Okay, here is a fourth screw and it's installed. Perfect. Now, since I'm going for a budget build, of course, it wouldn't make sense for me to actually like, get a full on AIO. So we just have a CPU air cooler and it shouldn't be too hard to install, but I've actually never installed a air cooler. I've always worked with AIO. So this will be my first air cooler. Okay, it's now the next day and I actually did get the cooler installed. I had to take out the motherboard, but now we have that all set up and since this case came pre-installed with four RGB fans. We don't have to set up any RGB fans, so that saves us some time. But now it's time to set up the actual power supply. Since it's a $350 PC, we didn't have that much power, so I just settled with a 500 watt power supply. And of course, it's non-modular just because of how much of a budget we're on, but of course it will still work perfectly fine. Of course, we're gonna put the power supply facing down just so it's like actually cooling correctly. And then we just have to screw it in. Okay, power supply is installed and now now it's time for my favorite part, which is adding the GPU. One downside to this PC is that these backplate thingies don't actually come off very easily. Plus, as soon as you take them off, you can't put them back on because you just cannot screw them. They just come off and then they're off forever. All right, there we go. Let's just push down our GPU and there it is. It's installed, but now we just have to screw it in. All right, the GPU is installed, but it's now time for my least favorite part, which is actually connecting everything because I always seem to mess this up somehow, but hopefully it doesn't go bad. The only problem with this build is that this fan right over here is supposed to be RGB, but it doesn't have any color because the motherboard, the A320, does not have any ARGB ports. So I had to order an adapter, which is coming tomorrow. At least the PC still has three RGB fans, which actually looks really nice, especially for the budget we had. It's now time to set up this PC and the rest of the sub $500 setup. Now for the monitor, it's the VOTech 24 inch monitor. And this monitor was actually in the last video. It cost me $120 
$120, but it's 165 hertz. I would have bought a different monitor, but for $120, this is probably the highest refresh rate monitor you can get. The mouse pad I'm gonna be using is this $10 mouse pad from Wish. It's an RGB mouse pad, but you guys can kind of use any $10 mouse pad you have. It doesn't even have to be a full size one, but this black RGB mouse pad will just kind of match the setup theme. Now for the keyboard and mouse, this is where most people mess up and they buy these really kind of RGB products, but they're absolutely a piece of crap and they are really, really bad. And now you're probably not gonna really believe me, but this keyboard was $20 from Wish. And I know Wish is kind of known to be really, really bad, but it's a mechanical keyboard and literally the best keyboard I've got for $20. A lot of Amazon keyboards you might find are literally membrane gaming keyboards, but this is a mechanical keyboard and feels really, really high quality. Again, you can find similar mechanical keyboards for maybe $25 on Amazon too. And now for the mouse, this is another $20 product. Probably one of the best $20 mice you can get, the Logitech G203. I got this from Amazon for I think $22, $23, like quite a long time ago, maybe like a year ago, and it's been perfectly fine. And for our headsets, we have the HyperX Cloud headsets. I got these quite a while ago, but now you can find them for like 40 bucks and they're really, really good sound quality. I cannot deal with bad sounding quality. So for my personal recommendation, I'd recommend just spending at least 40 bucks for a headset, maybe 30, but not really anything lower because then, especially in games, it's going to sound like really, really crappy. Now let's plug the entire setup in. My love's like a black hole sun, so bright when it burns, so dark when it's done, so hard to relate to one. One of the huge advantages of this setup compared to the previous one was that the previous one was a console, so you couldn't play PC games, but now that we have a PC over here, we can play games like Valorant and just a whole lot more games in general. But the big question is, how good is this PC with the 1050 Ti actually gonna be? I'm currently on all those settings and the PC is running just perfectly fine. I mean, Valorant's not too hard of a game to get some crazy FPS in, but we're getting like 250 FPS right now, which is not bad at all. One kill just like that. I will say, I definitely like the way the keyboard feels a lot more than the mouse, to be honest. Yo, what are these guys doing, bro? Why? What are they doing? They're just... I don't know what these guys are doing here. Yo, I'm hitting everyone for body shots, bro. Are you serious? You know what? I'm pushing. I don't even care. Dude, I can't even see. Yo, what is going on right now, bro? Temperatures are fine. I mean, it's a CPU-based game, and the temp on the CPU is literally like, completely chilling. So, like, no issues on it at all. I will say, though, the mouse feels a little bit awkward. I don't really like the way the mouse feels. It feels, like, really kind of delayed or something. The keyboard feels perfectly fine, which is really weird since it came from Wish. The craziest thing about this setup is that this PC cost me $350, and I bought a $330 PC. But after taxes from Amazon, it was like literally basically the same price. And this PC can actually run games because the old one, I am not even kidding, got like 30, 60 FPS on Valorant. It was so bad. And now the fact that this one's getting like 150 to 200, it's so much better. Dude, I literally don't even know like where the best place to land is here. And it's a hot drop. Like this is so bad. Oh, it's right here. I guarantee it. Yep. There we go. 80. Okay, the PC feels a little bit choppy and on console like Xbox Series S, you can get 120 FPS, but here we're getting 200. But the thing is, it does feel a little bit choppy, but overall, I think this PC does run Fortnite better on uh, this PC compared to the console. If I really wanted to play this game competitively, I'd probably cap the FPS at around 144. So it would hit 144 stable, which is better than the Xbox Series S, but you have to keep in mind this PC was $100 extra compared to an Xbox Series S. So you kind of have to wait out like what you kind of want to use uh the gaming system for okay, there's a guy like camping right here if i see you buddy ready oh my oh 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 my gosh i was too close i was too close look at this third party now okay now now they're going all crazy because they want a third party this is all fortnite is bro yeah this pc is getting 200 fps it's literally doing so much better than i expected i'm on all low settings performance mode by the way i didn't already say that yo these guys are some crazy fortnite kids oh my gosh oh get one pump literally sit down the mouse does feel a little bit weird the keyboard feels perfectly fine but i don't know it's just something about the mouse it definitely has like a good amount of delay or something because it just feels i don't know apart from a few lag spikes here and there this pc runs really well for Fortnite and Valorant. It's like honestly perfectly fine. I would just upgrade the mouse and probably also the mouse pad if you had like a little bit of a higher budget. The GPU right now is around 64 and as long as it doesn't go like over 70, it's like perfectly fine. But as soon as it goes over 70, it's probably really gonna start like lagging a lot in game. Finally, I found some more people. This is this thing I hate about Fortnite. It's just how long it takes for you to find like people, bro. People die off so quick. Oh, and there's a third party. Yo, we can sneak up on this guy so easily. Ready for this? Ready for this beam? Oh yeah, beamed. Literally so beamed. He's one shot. Oh my, this guy really wants to get in the action, bro. Oh my gosh, my trigger finger is so bad with this mouse. Oh my, you're weird. Whoa, how's he not dead? 
Oh my gosh, I'm like reacting IRL. I thought I was dead. W what am I doing? Like, what did I just do, bro? Oh, shoot. Oh, one pump. Oh my, oh my, sit down, sit down, sit down. That was nasty, bro. What is bro doing? Come on, I need this. Yes, this is so clutch, this is so clutch. I dare you, I dare you. Yup, look at this, ready? Oh yeah, easy, let's go. And the whole game, the FPS was really good. There we go, 10 kill win in arena. This is only my second time playing Overwatch and I have never played it in a video, so I'm gonna probably be really bad. But yeah, Overwatch, we're getting, it's the cap set to 165 FPS and this graphics card can literally handle it. Like this graphics card is fully chilling, bro. For this price, I don't think you can get anything better. The game feels really good and there's like no screen tearing or anything. You know what, I'm just gonna fully push. I don't even care, bro. I'm just gonna go right into their spawn here. Oh shoot, oh yeah. I don't even care, you know what? We're going right over onto him. Easy, just like that. Dude, our FPS is so good too. This game has so much sound, bro. There's so much sound going on in this game. I'm literally just fully in their spawn, ready for this? What is this? Yo, what the? Dude, I don't even know what half these abilities are. I'm about to die here. Oh yeah, easy, easy. Yo, I need to literally run away. He's he's chasing me. I'm one tap. Dude, I'm like such a bot at Overwatch, dude. Yo, I'm just literally playing around in their spawn right now and they can't kill me. I'm just teleporting all over the place. This guy saw me. Oh no, he didn't. There we go. Yo, I'm literally popping off right now, bro. These are some ball lobbies. Yo, 160 FPS too. We're chilling. Our GPU is like about to run over like 70 though. Our GPU is getting a little bit like hot, but that's kind of normal. If you guys enjoyed this setup video, make sure you drop a quick sub because I literally just built this setup video this week and this is the very first video I actually recorded in it and we have so much more to expand on and the content is just gonna get so much better. If you're already subbed though, of course, it'd be greatly, greatly appreciated if you drop a quick like. YouTube recommends this video right here and that's about it. God bless.